Researchers at Western University sounding the alarm over COVID-19 tests, saying most instructions for those nasal swabs are actually incorrect. Doctors involved in the study say the swab doesn't go deep enough into the nasal cavity. Joining me now is Dr. Lee Sowerby. He's an associate professor at Western University and an expert in the anatomy of the head, neck, and inside of the nose, where those swabs go. And doctor, good to have you on the program, but this is a disturbing study because it found that less than a quarter of public health instructions tell practitioners to swab deep enough to reach the cavity. So does that mean we may be getting some false negatives when it comes to COVID? Well, thanks for having me on. <clears throat> and it is uh, a great uh, point that you've, you've brought up there. So um, it does sound a bit sensationalistic to say we're sounding the alarm. And the reality is that any swab that's going in the nose is going to have a specimen that can be tested for COVID-19. The problem comes in that we're calling these nasopharyngeal swabs. And the majority of the instructions that are out there from our provincial health uh, authorities are not deep enough into the nasal cavity to reach the nasopharynx. Um, for most cases, that doesn't really matter because a patient who's symptomatic is going to have a positive result regardless of wherever that swab is in the nose. But we do know from the few studies that have been published looking at this that there's about a 90% sensitivity for an anterior nasal swab and a 95% sensitivity for a mid-nasal swab. What that means is that if that swab's done when there's a low prevalence of cases, so let's say there's an incidence of around 1% or 2%, of case positives in a, a particular population, there's gonna be maybe one per thousand swabs that's a false negative. Where it becomes a problem is if we have a much higher case positivity rate. So if we're looking at a rate of around 20%, like we saw in you know, mid-November in areas like Brampton and some areas in Toronto, mm. it becomes much higher. So we're looking at around 20 false, po sorry, 20 false negatives per thousand. Right. The problem with, with false negatives, as we all know, is that <clears throat> if you get that result, you're not going to be isolating yourself as you would otherwise, uh, particularly if you're in that asymptomatic cohort. Okay, I'm tight on time, so I just want to reiterate. Some provinces recommend four centimeters, some say seven centimeters. You say even seven centimeters isn't really enough. So why isn't there just a standardized rule right across the board across this country? That's a great question. And I think it comes back to where this test has originally come from. So a nasopharyngeal swab is a test that we used to do, or we still do, for influenza. Um, it's obviously become to the forefront because of how uh, prevalent it use is for, for COVID-19. You know, we're doing 50,000 plus uh, tests a day in Ontario. And because of that, I think each public health uh, organization has developed their own guidelines. Uh, if you look at a place like in the United States, the CDC has very clear guidelines on how to reach nasopharynx, and those swabs really do reach there. Um, the uh, Pan American Health Organization, same thing. They have instructions that were, are accurate and will reach the nasopharynx. Hmm. Um, those instructions are basically from the nose to the ear, if you're measuring outside, or about nine centimeters. Um, basically, you want to go until you're, meet, you're reaching resistance. Is that going to deter some people, Dr. Sowerby? And again, I, I'm really tight on time. So what's the recommendation here? Well, my recommendation would be you need to get that swab as far in as possible, yeah. um, particularly for asymptomatic patients. We want to make sure that we're getting um, that nasopharyngeal specimen. Um, it's most important in, case, or in areas where there is uh, a high incidence of cases. All right. We will have to see how the provinces individually respond. Appreciate it, doctor. Thank you, as always. Thank you for highlighting our research. Okay.